Well, we have a special treat today. With us is author and contributing editor of Country Living Garden and Magazine, Sharon Lovejoy. And some of you may have recalled when Sharon came to visit us before. And Sharon, thank you for dropping in on us again. I'm glad to be here, Brenda. Now, Sharon, you're going to show us some ways to attract critters to the garden, aren't you? Beneficial critters. Very good. And this is for children of pretty much all ages? Up to 100. Oh, great. <laughs> Now, to start with, I see a coffee can here, and how do you use the coffee can in the garden? <laughs> you can also use a bean can or anything about this size. Um, Brenda, if you'd hold that. Okay. I use this um, to attract beneficial wasps and bees into the garden, and they're attracted to pithy stem things like sunflowers, elderberries, blackberries, raspberries. I collect the stems. A few of them I drill or pick out the pith. Many of them I leave complete. I let them do the work of mm -hmm. um, excavating. I simply uh, duct tape it together and slide it in in a horizontal way. I like to pack it in firmly. We just didn't have enough stalks today. Pack it in firmly and mount it under an eaver in a, in a sheltered area and let your kids watch them. Um, I keep one of these wonderful magnifying glasses so kids can see exactly what's going on. Right. But I also use this. I snitch some of your um, shredded bark from your garden. And um, Robert Michael Pyle, who wrote the Butterfly Book, uh, mentions in one of his books that you can fill a coffee can like this with shredded bark and with bits of hay and straw, keep it dry, mounted in a sheltered area, and many times, many species of butterflies will, over, will overwinter in it, so that's important too. Okay, so this is actually a very useful thing. It is, and absolutely costs nothing to make. Right. Now you've got a little house here with a lot of holes in it, and this looks interesting. It is, it's a condominium for orchard mason bees, and these are 5 16 inch holes, evenly spaced apart in a six, foot block, a six inch block of wood, and it has a copper roof to you know, so that you prevent moisture from getting in. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is in early spring, the very first bees out are our native pollinators, and we need them for our, for our, our fruits. And the females will provision these cells, will lay their eggs, the female eggs in the back, build a wall, and then lay male eggs in front of that. These are the guys that we need to keep our orchards going since we have been so impacted by sick bees, sick imported mm -hmm. bees. So, this is nice. Now, you've got a larger bee house here. Oh, this is fun. This is called a humble bumble home that uh, a friend of mine manufactures. And it is simply a, a, a box of wood with little entry holes drilled in. They're about five-eighths of an inch, which is big enough to allow the queen bee in, mm -hmm. and it excludes rodents and birds and snakes, usually and you might want to peek inside. There's a little observation uh, area in here so you can actually see the bees as they're provisioning their nest, laying their eggs. They have little honey pots in here for their honey and pollen pots. Uh, this is very simple to make. You don't need to buy a kit, but you can buy a kit for it if you want to okay. do that. So now, next, we've got a lot of uh, pieces of pottery here. <laughs> Never waste a piece of pottery. If you want to build a, a simple uh, bumblebee house or bumblebee cottage, and it's fun for kids to write bumblebee cottage on with acrylic paint. My husband just uh, tried to drill it with a masonry bit and decided to actually, uh, he used a, he honed it down so that mm -hmm. he could use just a regular bit so it's not as expensive. To do a 5 8 inch hole again, okay. you put a cork in the top, it's very important that you cork it or put a rock on top so that the bees don't get damp, their nest isn't damp. Okay. And then I brought dryer lint all the way from California because I provision the bottom of the nest with dryer lint and a little bit of shredded bark. Usually you bury it about an inch or two into dry soil. Mm -hmm. You can put gravel in the bottom and there you have a bee house and you don't have to buy it and you don't have to build it. Very nice. But I also use these as toad houses. I lay them on their side and cover them with moss and mud and toads in, and sink them in about three inches into the soil. And they really do work. Or if you have a broken crock, you can simply set it into the soil and have a large entry hole and the toads will actually take shelter in there. Oh, well, this is nice because this is all stuff you've got at home. <laughs> broken pots, That's plenty right. of them. <laughs> so, now this is an interesting little bundle of sticks. Well, Here. again, we had our home-picked bundle of uh, pithy stemmed twigs 
and if you feel that, you see that they're very pithy in oh, the center. Yes. This is actually a Serratina bee nesting box. Mm -hmm. They're a black pollen bee, and they will. You can actually hang this in a shady spot under a tree. Again, this is mass manufactured, and you can make this yourself, or you do the coffee can. And they will actually drill into it, excavate into it, lay their eggs. You want these guys in your in your garden. They're very beneficial. Right. And that's a good thing about all of these beneficial insects and children. You can teach them not to be afraid of them. You don't have to be afraid of them. Even the bumblebees virtually are stingless unless you actually step on them. They'll have to flip over on their back to sting you, but they're, I've actually petted them. They're wonderful. Mm -hmm. They're not aggressive. So now you've got a very nice gourd house here. Yes, I'm very proud of this gourd. And my husband fixed this up for me. Um, this is a purple martin gourd. And of course, you have a larger hole for the purple martins. and. Uh, is believed, the Purple Martin Conservation Association believes that the martins like these because they sway the way their original trees swayed. They oh. used to nest in trees, but obviously they don't now. They've become accustomed to man providing housing for them. And it's very simple. You do ventilation holes in the top, drainage holes around the bottom, mm -hmm. and this large hole for entry, but never a perch, or you'll get starlings and English sparrows and things that are invasive. So. But these are easy to grow, a good project for kids to grow their own gourds. And you have the heat here and yes. the sunshine for them. We get some nice gourds here. Now these boxes are a little bit bigger, and uh, who do they house? Well, this is all the rage right now, and it's called um, Ladybug Lodging. And mm -hmm. you can see the ladybugs on it. And I've tested it uh, lots of times, and I've never had a ladybug in it, but I understand Maybe I'm doing it incorrectly. Uh, if you buy ladybugs or get a, bu a clump of ladybugs and set them in there, you have a little bit of shredded bark as we, as we use for our other project, or pine needles. Mm -hmm. Many people squirt pheromones that you can get from nature centers or from garden shops. They squirt pheromones on here. I've been told by ladybug experts that they actually are able to attract autumn ladybugs in here that hibernate over the winter. Okay. I haven't had that fortunate uh, <laughs> experience. Yeah. This final box is for another beneficial critter. Much maligned and much misunderstood and very well loved by me and by kids. Bats. Oh, yeah. And um, many people are afraid of bats and they don't get tangled in your hair and they're, they're so gentle that I've actually held them and they don't bite. Although if you find one on the ground, never pick it up cover it gently with a box and, and call an animal regulation person. And this my husband made for me out of scraps of wood. With, if you feel inside, you'll feel the rough wall. Yes. And that way the bats can fly into it and up and cling to the wall. And they need that so that they can hold on. We, um, we're, we're suffering a loss of bats because we're spraying so much and we're losing a lot of the critters they feed on. So, and if you have uh, insect problems, bats are a definite solution to those problems as are purple martins. Very good. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And, it's my pleasure. Um, it's good to know that not all critters are icky. They're not, they're wonderful. They're an experience.